In this episode, we're taking a look at how a shot in the dark brings up more matter than we know what to do with. This is a picture in a thousand words. Welcome to A Picture in a Thousand Words. My name is Mobdi Rahman, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at an image that really changed the way we look at the universe and how much stuff we think there is in it. So let's jump right in. So what we're taking a look at here is a group of galaxies called the Bullet Cluster. And this is a group of galaxies, so you can see it all sort of in this area. And it's about 3.4 billion light years away. Now, this is an image that's taken the underlying image. So all of this stuff, all these galaxies that you're taking a look at over here and over here and over here, all of that was taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's mostly optical light and infrared light. So optical light, similar to what your eyes can see, and infrared light, which is light that's redder than the red that your eyes can see. Painted on top of the Hubble image, in this pink color over here is the image taken by the Chandra X-ray telescope. So those are light rays that are, have so much energy and are so much bluer than blue that they don't even make it through our atmosphere. So we have to go to space and use a telescope like Chandra to take a look at them. And so that is what we're seeing here. And as you can see, it looks like a big blob of gas because essentially that's where the X-rays are coming from. A lot of a big blob of gas in this cluster. And then finally, the last thing that's painted on this image is all of this purpleness over here. And so you got a bit over here, but most of it is in these two little clumps. And what that is, is an estimate for where the mass in the cluster is. And the way they derive this is through gravitational lensing. So we've done a previous episode on the horseshoe Einstein ring, so feel free to take a look. I'll put a link in the description. But just as a refresher, Gravitational lensing is when you have something with a lot of mass and the gravity from that mass causes light to bend around it. So if you can imagine if you had an object with a lot of mass over here, and let's say that you're over here taking a look, and there is an object right behind it, the light rays that would typically be going out that way, because of the gravity, would be pointed at would be bending down towards you because of this object. And the more the, the more the object weighs, the more matter there is, the more it bends that light. So it gives you a way of weighing things in space. And that's a crazy thing because it's really hard to figure out how much mass is in a certain area. There's not really an easy, you can't take a star and put it on a scale and try to figure out how much mass there is. So gravitational lensing is one of the few ways we get to, we get to figure that out. But more than that, it also tells us where that matter is. And the way that it works in an image like this is if you take a look at the galaxies that are behind it, and you take a look at how much the light from them is getting bent, and around here there's very few, the light from these galaxies isn't getting bent, but in the center of these locations, it's getting bent by a lot more all of these galaxies and collectively all of those galaxies the amount of light the amount that the light is getting bent is going to tell you how where the matter is and how much there is so this is telling us that the vast majority of the matter is over here and over here with a little bit over here so what's going on in this image so what the bullet cluster was formed by is two large groups of thousands of galaxies, two large galaxy clusters that have come together. And they started to collide together. And the X-ray gas, or the X-ray light, is tracing the majority of the normal matter, the gas and the galaxies and most things that we see and know about. All of that is, in, is following the X-ray light. And if you notice, it's all towards the center. But when we take a look through gravitational lensing, we know that the vast majority of the mass of the cluster is here and here. So how did we get the bullet cluster? Well, the best way to think about it is two clusters that collided with one another. So if this was the first cluster, 
and it came in this direction. And then you had another cluster come in this direction, and this is all of the gas and the mass that came with it. What you can see is all the gas was left behind where the two clusters met. And this is because when you take two piles of gas or two piles of water and throw them at each other, the drag and the resistance and the friction between the gas all keeps it there. And all of that stuff is kind of just stuck in the center and it's slowed down. And that's really important, it's slowed down. But the rest of the stuff seems to not have slowed down, it seems to have continued going in this direction and in that direction so that they're separated. So that's why you have a lot of matter that's further out that is easily separated because most of that mass seems to have gone through one another and we don't completely understand what that is. So it looks like there's all of this, the vast majority of the mass in this cluster didn't seem to interact with one another, it seemed to go right through it like a bullet, hence the term, the bullet cluster. And so it's mostly over here and over here. And we don't know what this matter is. It's the vast majority of the matter in the cluster, as we can see from gravitational lensing, but there's not a lot of gas and there's not necessarily a lot of stars. So a lot of the normal stuff that we think making up these galaxies and clusters of galaxies isn't there. And it doesn't seem to have interacted with one another. It doesn't seem to have slowed down when it went in that direction or when it went in that direction. And in fact, because it's most of the mass in the cluster, we can extrapolate and figure out that it's the vast majority of the mass in the universe. It's not just limited to this cluster. And we call this matter dark matter. And this is one of the reasons that we know the universe is filled with this stuff that we don't even have the first idea what it is. And this is why this picture has really changed the way we look at the universe today. This image shows us that there's so much more to the universe than we can see ourselves. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of A Picture in a Thousand Words. If you liked it, please feel free to hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. We always appreciate your feedback. And feel free to throw a comment in the comment box below, especially if you have a recommendation of an image that you want us to take a look at in the future. Your fun fact for the week is, even though we don't fully know what dark matter is, in fact, don't even at all know what dark matter is, one of the disproven theories was one where there would be a lot of really compact, faint objects that were all around our, our galaxy. And so you'd be able to eventually take a look at them and maybe see them block light. And they could be things like tiny black holes or really faint stars or planets that don't seem to have any host and they're kind of floating around the galaxy. Turns out that there's not enough of these things. But what they used to be called, the theory, called the Massive Astrophysical Compact Halo Objects, or MACHOs for short. Now the leading theory for what dark matter are, or dark matter is, are these weakly interacting massive particles. Uh, and that's something that we'll probably go into in a future episode, but they're called WIMPs. So it's definitely not machos, but it might be WIMPs. Until next time. <laughs>